mission. Should you choose to accept it. It's a quest. It's a quest for fun. Well, The Rock says, why don't we just cut right to the chase? Okay, now he, uh, you know, he wants to get together. Well, you know, he wants to talk. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to tell all your friends about me. It's showtime, folks! What are you? I'm... Greetings and salutations. Welcome to And I Quote, the weekly show. We introduce you to content creators of all shapes and sizes. Join us from any and all corners of the nerd universe. I am your host, Ryan of Neuroculture, and joining us this week is a very special guest. We kicked off National Novel Writing Month as well as National Reading Month. Earlier in the month, I believe it was Molly Daniels. And what better way to wrap this thing up with the king of cool, the prince of, I don't know, insert whatever you want here. He is the leader of Russ Explode Studios. Please welcome writer and podcaster, Russell Allen. Russ, welcome to this program. How are you today, good sir? Doing good, how are you doing? Doing well, doing well. I had the perfect intro, but then I kind of butchered it at the end. I hope you please forgive me. But other than that, we're thank you, or we're thankful, I should say, you're with us. And if you have any questions for Russ as we go throughout uh, the course of the show today, leave it in the live chat, leave it in the comments. Our producer is going to be monitoring it as we go throughout the course of the program. In the meantime, Russ, first things first, what were some of your favorite books or writers growing up? My favorite books and writers growing up, Brian Jakes. Uh, by far, the uh, Redwall series is one of my biggest inspirations just because I loved his way of storytelling. Uh, you never knew what adventure the characters were going to go on, and he wasn't like a always happy ending. He included poems and, and recipes throughout, and it broke up the book. It was one of those page turners. You'd end a, you'd end a chapter, and you're like, oh, it's 11 o'clock at night. I'll just read one more, and then you finish the book, and it's 2 o'clock in the morning. Um, other than that, I, I read just pretty much anything, you know, Animorphs, uh, Choose Your Own Adventure. They had the N Nintendo Power, Choose Your Own Adventures, Goosebumps. Uh, I, man, I read so many books, especially in the summertime. I mean, I would check out like 100 books or more each summer. So I, I really don't have any other favorite authors other than Brian Jakes. That was really my uh, my big thing, which I'm excited. They're making a movie about Martin the Warrior. I cannot wait. Oh, interesting. Interesting. I was I was not aware of this. Just out of curiosity, though, a favorite book or moment within the Goosebumps series and then favorite book or moment within the Animorphs book series? Man, the Animorphs, I don't think I had a favorite. I just every time one would come out, I would just I was like, oh, yeah, there's a new one. A Goosebumps. I want to say it's the what's the one where they're at? It's the roller coasters and stuff. The the carnival one. Hmm. That I name escapes think. me. That name escapes me. But if you know it, please let us know in the comments. We would love to hear about it. Absolutely. I can't but, think of what it's called. Oh man, is it the roller, not roller coaster from Death or roller coaster? No. Of Death? I can't remember. But if anyone knows, please let us know in the comments. Leave it in the live chat. But let me ask you this: favorite episode from the Goosebumps live action series, as well as the Animorphs live action series that we had back in the heyday on something known as Fox Kids and Snick on Nickelodeon. That I never watched either one of those. I how dare you, sir? You call yourself a fan? You didn't even watch the TV series of the Golden <laughs> Age of the '90s? How dare you? Well, and that was the thing, you know. I I didn't watch much TV, honest, and, and to, even to today, I don't watch much TV either. And I did watch like the Batman animated series and you know stuff like that. But see, I didn't growing up. I didn't have cable or oh. anything. My parents we only had local TV, so I didn't have SNCC or or Fox Kids TV. The only thing I had was uh, 11, Channel 11 and Channel 9. So <laughs> that, that was the extent of my cartoon watching. So I watched a lot of Darkwing Duck, uh, Samurai Pizza Cats, you know, Voltron would come on early in the morning. And mm -hmm. then, you know, the Three Stooges at night. That was my, uh, my kids, uh, uh, my upbringing as a kid. Gee whiz. You know, it's amazing that the voice of Darkwing Duck, the legendary actor known as Jim Cummings, has voiced over 400 different characters. And they've all been within, whether it's the Disney realm or outside of the Disney studio. But man, that guy's voice keeps going, man. Yep. He doesn't quit. He doesn't quit, no. honestly. I had the pleasure of meeting him one time. He signed an 8x10 that was provided at his booth. And it was of uh, it was a rendering of Darkwing Duck. And it says, you know, to so-and-so, let's get dangerous. dangerous. I mean, come on. Yep. Does does it get much does it get much better than that? I will say. But when did you decide to become a writer? Well, so 
the story starts out when I was in third grade. So, uh, you know, our teacher handed us these these coloring pictures. And mm -hmm. like our, the one that stands out the most in my mind is there was a lady and a tiger. Or, I'm sorry, and a lion. They were out in the desert. Right. And the teacher handed it to us and said, write a uh, short uh, story on this. Color it. Write a short, short story on it. So everybody else wrote like a one page story. Me being me, I'm long winded. So I wrote like 10 pages and turned it in. And, you know, so she had to take it home to read it because it was so long. And I write small. So 10 pages is probably more like 25. And so she read it and came back the next day and handed it to me. And she put, this is really good. And, you know, after class, she's like, hey, I want you to stay for a minute. She's like, what you wrote was really beautiful. She's like, it's really good. You could really do something with this. Do you like writing? And I was like, I love writing. And she's like, stick to it. But, you know, then like my dreams were shattered because everybody's like, oh, you need to get a real job. Don't be a writer. You'll be struggling the rest of your life. You'll never be able to own a house and you won't have a decent vehicle and be able to support a family. So, you know, my dreams are crushed as a writer, but that's where it all began. <laughs> a woman, a tiger, lion. It so sounds a little bit of something, something like 1939's Wizard of Oz. Lions and yeah. tigers and bears and Dorothy oh walking my. through. Oh, my. That's right. Yeah, could be could be anything there, but I'll leave I'll leave that up to your imagination. So what would you say are some of the biggest rewards of being a writer? The biggest reward of being a writer is it's a release and knowing that, you know, what you were writing, that somebody else out there is enjoying that piece and using it to escape their life. So it's kind of like a it's an escape for my life to release the tension, release the emotions that I don't want to, you know, the burdens of my life into a story and onto a character. But then somebody else is using that to escape their life to read it. So it's just, it's funny how that works out. It's a release for me and it's also a release for the reader. And it's nice knowing that I can provide that kind of story for someone to escape their life, live in someone else's shoes and follow their journey as they move along. Hmm. There you go. There you go. Thank you for sharing that with us. Once again, we're talking with Russell Allen of Russ Explodes Studios, writer and podcaster. If you have any questions for him, let us know in the comments. Leave it in the live chat. Producer's going to be keeping an eye on that. And also, make sure you're sharing this video with 500 of your closest friends. They're going to like the way they look after watching this video. I guarantee it. So on the flip side of that, what would you say are some of the biggest challenges of being a writer, Russ? Biggest challenge of being a writer is you, you don't ever want to say this is my best piece. Mm -hmm. So you know, the, the biggest challenge of a writer is you write a book, the next book, you want to best that book, the next book, you want to best that book. So it's always leveling up, uh, listening to the fans. What do they want more of? What do they want to see less of? And still staying true to the story, the way that you want to write it. Um, I'd say that's the biggest challenge because you always want to best yourself. You never want to get comfortable and say, this is my best book ever, because if that's your best book ever, then you might as well quit writing, you know? Uh, you want you want to level up as you as you go. You don't want to just stay the same and provide the same kind of content. Ooh, fascinating stuff. So you hear that, friends? Thank you very much for sharing that with us. Now I got a here's another one for you. This is a book that's been talked about a lot. It's been out for a while now, but I want to hear where this came from. It's called Xeno Nanite Titan, written by you, of course. And I'm just curious, where did the story for this come from? How did it all get? How did it all? come come to be and also if you have an executive standing next to you in an elevator what's going to be your elevator pitch but let's start from the beginning how'd you come up with this idea so the idea for zen and Nanite titan started when i was eight years old so we're talking you know 1993 i i majored pretty much in science and math those are my two strong points mm -hmm. and as a kid i always wondered what if black holes really weren't black you know just things that destroyed objects because you know if you think about it if a black hole sucks in all this matter it would grow exponentially until it just engulfed the entire universe because if a black hole is a gravity well that pulls things in then if it pulls in uh you know enough asteroids and enough space debris it would grow big enough to suck in planets and then it would grow bigger because all of this matter would be trapped within the ring of the black hole so it was just mm -hmm. a, it was a it was a fascinating theory that I came up with, and that was you know something that I did for class. You know, make up a theory about something to do with space. So I wrote you know a five or six page uh, theory. I still have it uh, about oh, wow. what if a black hole was a gateway to somewhere else. 
Mm-hmm. And, you know, this was way before Event Horizon, which totally freaked me the hell out. I was like, oh, my God, somebody stole my idea. And that's totally not cool. I'm never going to <laughs> investigate because I don't want to, like, go go to hell. But, you know, so <laughs> if I seen Event Horizon. And I was like, that just crushes my theory. Like, that could so totally be true. But right. that's where it all began. You know, what would happen if a black hole really was a gateway to another part of the universe? And so, you know, that's where this story kind of stemmed from. And then I came up with the idea for Xenonanite Titan because uh, I was always fascinated with like xenomorphs from uh, uh, aliens or xenomorphs. Oh, xenomorphs. Yeah. Yeah. However, you know, everybody pronounces stuff different, but it's okay. that's where it kind of came from. I, I, and, and Xenogears was one of my favorite games for the PlayStation. And uh, hmm. so I, I, it's kind of where the names stem from. And so I, I wrote this story. It was about a father that had kids. He was, you know, working on a project. He was on leave, spending time with his family. He gets called back to work, and then an accident happens. And so that's kind of where everything, you know, stems off from with the story. And so it was just, you know, it was something that uh, I, I, I didn't really start writing it until about 2010. I wrote down a bunch of notes about it. But that's where the idea first began. Then 2010 came around, and I told my wife, I said, I want a uh, Chromebook for Christmas. Or for, well, no, it was for my birthday. Mm-hmm. I want a Chromebook for my birthday. And she's like, why? And I'm like, well, I work over the road once a week while I'm at the hotel. I'd like to start writing. You know, I've always wanted to do this. Uh, why not do it on the side? You know, start it out as a hobby, and then maybe I can make something of it. So I started writing it. By 2015, I had almost 900 pages uh, wow. And then my son had open heart surgery, and then that's kind of where everything just fell off, and the, the dream kind of just went out the window because it was surgery after surgery. So uh, that's kind of why you know this story was wrote in 2010, but uh, it was finally published in June of this year for the very first time. So it was a very exciting moment in my life. I did a complete rewrite of it last year, uh, so it's a lot more enjoyable because the characters are more. Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Relatable. Mm-hmm. Wow, that is incredible. You know, hey, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. Things take time. Good things come to those who wait. So there you go, man. Your book is out now. We have links uh, for where you can purchase that book are located in the description of this video. You are not going to want to miss it. So with that being said, any special memories for you from being at conventions, whether you're there as a vendor selling your book or whether you're there as an attendee? Hmm. I mean, the most most notably was uh, meeting Ryan Kincaid. Hmm. Um, you know, Ryan Kincaid and his wife Shannon. Oh, uh, I met them at C two E two in nineteen, and they're great people. But it was my son's birthday, and you know, I went up there to get uh, my Vampirella sign because, of course, I'm a Vampirella fan. So ah. I had some Ryan Kincaid Vampirellas. I was like, hey, sure. CGC's here. I'm going to get them signed. I had a witness with me. And uh, my son was like, today's my birthday. And they're like, oh, happy birthday. And Shannon got two prints and gave him two prints for his birthday. And uh, my, Roderick was just looking at Ryan. And Ryan's like, why is he looking at me like that? <laughs> and, and I'm like, I think he wants the, the, the prints signed. Because mm-hmm. I'm getting my book signed. Mm-hmm. And he's like, oh, he's like, do you want me to sign those for you, buddy? And Roderick's like, yeah. And he's like, all right. So, you know, so really great people. Uh, you know, I just love how, you know, they went out of their way, you know, to give him something for his birthday. There's not a lot of artists or creators or stuff that, you know, are are, are that awesome. And I just, you know, that's one of the things that, that really sticks out for me. I won't forget that, how gracious they are as people. Because that's the one thing that matters to me. No matter how big of a of a creator or a celebrity you get to be, you always need to stay humble, take care of people, be human, and do something nice for somebody. And that really, really struck me as being something awesome. Oh man, that's really that that is really cool. That is really some absolutely. Once again, we're talking with Russell Allen from Russ Explode Studios. If you got any questions for him? Let us know in the comments. Leave it in the chat. Make sure you're sharing this video with all 600 of your closest friends. They're going to like the way they look after watching our videos, I guarantee it. So what advice would you have for aspiring writers out there, Russ? Always write when a mood that you're in. So if you're writing a book and you're in a spot where you need it to be happy, don't write it when you're mad. Don't write it when you're sad. Uh, don't move on. Just put it off. Let it sit. 
Let it sit for that perfect moment. So as a writer, I can't move on and I can't jump back and forth. Like people are like, well, why don't you just move on later in the story? It's like, because look, this already happened. I'm past it and I'm building. I'm like, so I can't come back here. So my advice is, is never try to write a piece that you can't be in the mood for because your mood's not going to come across right. That's one set of advice. The second set of advice is, Don't go back and second guess yourself and change stuff because as a writer, I have changed stuff, went back and changed it back to the way it originally was because I liked that way better. Usually you you have a good sense of the way the story needs to go and going back and changing it a hundred times does nobody any good. Uh, Just leave it the way it is. Leave it for the editor uh, to decide what's best and get that book out there. Stop making excuses. There you go. Wise words spoken by a very wise man in Russell Allen. What would you say are some of your favorite writers of today, whether they be writers, you know, with words on a page or comic book writers? Hmm. Either one. That's a good question. Nah. I like reading older books. Like one of my one of my favorite books right here is mm-hmm. this book here, Galactic Warlord by Douglas Hill. This is a freaking awesome book. Uh, the, the story behind this is the school was throwing these out. Uh, they're like, hey, these are going to be thrown out the next day. And I mean, you can see it there. The last time it was checked out was February of 1998. No, I'm yes. sorry, 19, 1989. Woo. So, so this book is was checked out last time, almost as old as I am, was the last time it was checked out. They were going to throw these away. And I'm like, no. So I took all the books out of there that I wanted and I donated the rest to Goodwill because why would you throw away a perfectly good book? Take them to Goodwill. Somebody else will enjoy it for a dollar and uh, that dollar will help somebody else who needs money. But, Mm. you know, this is a freaking fantastic book. If you're into some of the Pulp Fiction books, Galactic Warlord is absolutely awesome. This is another book that really inspired me with Xenonanic Titan is the way that this was written. Uh, I just love the death out of it. I can't think of any current writers because honestly, I don't really read any of the current books. Um, plus, I don't have time to read. <laughs> uh, you know, I run podcasts. I work a full time job. I'm writing book two, and uh, I got a car game live right now. So I am Jeez. just b- loaded to the hilt with crazy stuff going on. And you know, I'm a full time father. I got two kids and a wife. So uh, I, I don't know how I do it sometimes. I just make it happen. So as far as comic book writers, man, that's a that's a good question because I don't really read anything modern that's like, you know, mainstream. All of my stuff is, you know, pretty much indie. You know, Brian Rodman, uh, you know, with his uh, memoirs of an angel, what we were just talking about that backstage. You know, I picked up all of them with the last Kickstarter, not this one that he just ended. Uh, but with the last one, and so oh, right. I definitely got on board for this this latest issue. Mm-hmm. Um, CB Zane uh, and Michael Shoemaker, you know, mm-hmm. they they're both uh, really good uh, indie comic book writers. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, CB is more of an artist, but he's written his own stories as well with like the Mighty Might and stuff, uh, mm-hmm. which just came out here not too long ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's just too many to name. Uh, there's a lot of indies that I back. <laughs> Yeah, no love for those guys like Rodney Fike or Sean Forney. No, I'm kidding. Oh, yeah, Rodney <laughs> Fike and Sean Forney. Yeah, definitely. You know, you've got uh, Scarlet Huntress and you got the uh, Scarlet's Field Guide to Cryptids and Other Creatures. That was a great book that they they code wrote and mm-hmm. did pieces for. And then, you know, of course, Rodney Fike with uh, Roadkill Rampage. I love the horror story. And he's also got Pitter Patter and <laughs> Peanut Pudding and Jelly. So... <laughs> Uh, you guys are going to love it when Pitter Patter 3 comes out. Mm-hmm. I-, I can't tell you guys, but I'm just going to tell you guys if you don't want to miss out on Pitter Patter 3. Uh, way, to be, way to be good See, with the teasers. Thing. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's way to be my good thing, with the man. Teaser I, trailers. <laughs> I, I interview so many creatives. You know, I do two shows a week and then we do Blast Cast on Saturdays where you have like nine or 10 creators on. Like, I collaborate with so many creators. When somebody says, Who's my favorite? I'm like, can't you know, pick favorites. I have eight thousand names rattling around in my brain and it's like the, yeah. the the powerball machine you know got all those balls rolling around and eventually one of them will go down in the hole and then you're like 
Oh, what's the next one? <laughs> it's a good, yeah, it's a good point because you have so many friends, uh, whether they be writers or creators of all shapes and sizes. And I respect that about you. That's a good thing. Now that actually, it's a good segue because it brings me to my next question. Russ Explodes Studios. When did you when did you decide to become a podcaster, and when did the studio start podcasting? Well, I started Art Exposure in twenty eighteen. I started Art Exposure. Sure. Uh, I've always been into like the indie the indie community, trying to mm -hmm. help out indie creators, and mm -hmm. I just could not get it off the ground. Like nobody wanted to go live. They were too busy with cons, or they were just too embarrassed to go live and do do a show. And so I, I got a few. Uh, I got uh, Finney the Great to come on. And I don't remember who the second person was that came on. Uh, but uh, there was just so many people. I was beating down the door. I'm like, come on, let's go live. So I just kind of gave up on it. You know, I just left art exposure there. People were sharing their art. People were having fun. And, you know, people were like, oh, yeah, I'll do a show. And then they would never respond back. But uh, last year I had the cancer scare. And so uh, I found out I may, may have, you know, cancer. They found a mass on my spine. It came back significant evidence of malignancy. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that's why I started Russ Explode Studios. So mm -hmm. in February, I'm like, you know, I may have cancer. Uh, they don't want to do a biopsy on it because it's too close to certain organs mm -hmm. that if they would go in and do a biopsy, it could metastasize. So they're like, we'll wait and see what happens. So I was like, you know, what do I regret the most? And I'm like, I regret not making this happen. So I started Rust Explode Studios. Rust Explode's always been a name I used back when I uh, did uh, gaming at, with LAN parties. My gamer tag was Rust Explode. I've always really loved that. I used it for you know my uh, my uh, social media stuff when I was in school. And I'm like, you know, everything's already out there as Rust Explode. Why not do Rust Explode Studios? I don't have to create anything new. The name's already out there. Uh, people Google it. Stuff will already come up. I don't have to try to create a new SPO. And so. Uh, uh, or not SPO, SEO. Uh, so I'm like, Russ Explode Studios, books with heart, you know, because that's what it's all about. I want to write a story that inspires people and has heart to it. So I started that. And then I was like, you know, why not do the podcast? You know, COVID mm -hmm. happened, everything shut down, there was no cons. And so then artists and stuff, they're just like, how do I get work? And so the people that, you know, back when Art Exposure around wouldn't do the videos, we're messaging me saying, hey, is is the offer still on the table? And I'm like, let's do this thing. So I started out doing Tuesdays and then it mm -hmm. got so crazy. Like people were like, well, hey, well, can I, could I be on your show? I'm like, yeah, I'm not, you know, going to turn anybody away. So I had to open up Sundays uh, and then it just turned into the thing. You know, we weren't just having artists and creators on. We had uh, a chef on. We've had life coaches on. We've wow. had musicians uh, you know, I'm open to anybody that's in the indie community that hasn't, you know, they're not, you know, they're not, they don't have a huge following. I mean, if they have right. a huge following. They want to come on and talk. Uh, that's fine. But I'm more over the little guys, the artists the last underdogs. Sunday I had on the underdogs, the artists I had on last Sunday. Uh, I found her on TikTok. Her work is beautiful. Really? Shelby Gardner, absolutely beautiful work and all she's on TikTok and she's got all these simps in her, in her, uh, in her comments. And I'm like, you know, your art's really beautiful. So her and I are having this conversation. All these other people are like, oh, you know. And so we really, we really connected. Uh, I started messaging her, and I said, let's do a show. She came on last Sunday. And we showed off her art, and we she's already got two paid gigs, and uh, she's going to be uh, an artist in book two of Zeno Nanite Titan. So I'm excited to have her in there. Uh, and and she was in tears. She was just absolute tears. She's like, this has been my dream to get on a show. And I'm like. You know, well, first off, I'm not that popular. But second off, your work is beautiful. You deserve all of the the love that you can get. Come on here. I know a bunch of indie creators that would love to commission you for art. And so th that's what the podcast was all about last year was the underdogs, the people that couldn't get work. And uh, it's it's just, you know, now I'm, it's my full time thing. I do Sundays and Tuesdays, Saturdays, Blastcast. We do a panel show. We do half fans, half creators who have current kickstarters going that way we get a little bit of mix up we talk stories uh we talk you know smack to each other we have fun <laughs> and then we talk about these projects and you know it's it's a way to have fun but also promote each of these creators as as we do it and we've even had a five hour long show it's gotten insane we didn't hop off to like one o'clock in the morning <laughs> it's nuts. jeez Man. so that's 
that's how it all started. You know, it started in 18 and then, you know, in, in 2020 when everybody's like, oh my God, I can't get work. Wait, where's this Russell dude that wanted to have me <laughs> come on his show? <laughs> Let's do this thing now. I need money. I have no income coming in. And so uh, it was great to get to help other creators. That's what, that's what I'm all about. You know, uh, the biggest thing I always say is take what you get and give it tenfold. Hmm. There you go. There you go. A little bit about paying it forward. And as a wise person once said, you probably heard of this individual, Brian K. Morris once said, rising Dude. tide raises all ships. That's right. It does. Uh, yeah. we, I love Brian. He's a great dude. I met him at Heroes for Kids Con this year because uh, I live uh, probably about an hour from uh, Perryville. So oh, we okay. went to that. And what was your interaction like with him? What was it like? Uh, we gave each other a huge hug. He was a great dude. We, it was we a bromance around. blooming over there? It was a bromance blooming. I'm telling you, you know, that, that Fez copter just, you know, it just gets me going. <laughs> you do the chopper. No. Mm, gee whiz. Yeah, he is it, it, certainly. And Brian, once again, we're mentioning your name here. So make sure that if you're watching this or a member of Brian K. Morris's uh, friendship circle, take another shot. So... Brian K. Morris, what a supportive person. He's one of the people, I mean, he doesn't like this title that I've given him over the course of time that I've known him, but I give it to him anyway, the Mr. Rogers of the interwebs. Cause he's just That's so right. nice. He's so nice. He's so nice, so supportive, puts a smile on that face. And by the way, when you're doing a two hour show by yourself and just reading comments off the, off the board or off the comment section of your stream yard, I'm thinking to myself, he makes it an art cause I, that's hard to do a show solo. It's very, very difficult to fly solo, but he, you know, Brian K. Morris, I know you're watching this at home in your mansion right now. You make it look easy, my friend. Well, let me tell you, you what it is, 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 you know, for all of these years, you know, Brian's been talking to his invisible friend. Um, he's been so, around a long time. Yeah. 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 He's been talking to his invisible friend. And so it just comes natural to him to be talking to himself while, he, while he's live. And he's like, why don't I just turn this into an art? You know, I've been doing this all my life. So uh, let, let's let's make good use of it. Why just not? Just kidding, Brian. I love you. Yeah, we all do. We all do. I mean, he's a very supportive individual. If you don't know who Brian K. Morris is, go to risingtide.pub. Look up the website. Check out his YouTube channel. He does shows a billion times a week. The man is, yeah, he's been around a long time. I don't know how he does five shows a week. You're out of your mind, Brian. You're out of your mind. But we applaud you for doing it anyway. I mean, look at Russ. You do three shows a week, and some of them last five to six hours. Yeah. So just, I don't know how some of you individuals do it. But hey, more power to you, and my hat is off to you, wonderful indie uh, content creators, all shapes and sizes. We uh, support one another. Hashtag Rising Tide Raises All Ships. So Hashtag it's the community. It is, man. It is. It is. It, it really, really is. So we've talked about Russ Explode Studios. We talked about Xeno Nanai Titan. That is blowing up the, the uh, best-selling book charts. But I do have something that is very interesting to me, and this has been posted about on social media for a while now. I see it on social media. People talk about it at times. Tell us, what exactly is CB4K.org, and how did that all start? So that all started back in 2018. So uh, this, is a, this is a funny story that will give a little bit of backup to it. My wife never knew I collected comic books. We've been together for uh, 14 years, and I was online, and uh, John and Mary with Hooked on Comics were online doing uh, a comic show. Well, it popped up in like my news feed and I was like, oh, that's cool. And they had a Punisher book up. And I was like, damn, I don't think I have that Punisher book. And that's such a great book. I got rid of mine. So I ran downstairs and I'm going through the closet. My wife's like, what in the world are you doing? And I'm like, I'm looking for my comic books. She's like, what comic books? I'm like, I have two big crates that are completely full of comic books. She's like, oh, whatever. And I find them in the closet under the stairs and I pull them out. And she's like, oh, my God, I never knew you collected comic books. You're such a nerd. <laughs> and I'm like, you're right. I'm like, but you're a nerd, too, because now, you know, she always made fun of me for watching Harry Potter. And then, like, she's now the biggest Harry Potter nerd you'll ever meet. So, you know, I've swayed her to the dark side. She's a Lord of the Rings fan, a Harry Potter fan, Star wow. Wars fan, and, Amazing. you know, just a big lover of the MCU universe. So, you know, I pull these comic books out and, you know, I start watching John and Mary's show and every night on Saturdays, they do a CB4K auction where they take uh, a slab off of their wall, a book that a viewer has donated. I've donated stuff to them to auction off mm -hmm. and you buy a spot for $10. They put your name on the wheel. You can buy as many spots as you want and it goes to CB4K.org. And so my son's had two open heart surgeries. That's kind of what stops production on my book. Uh, his first open heart surgery when he was a week old, 
Uh, it was in 2015. I took my computer to the hospital thinking I was going to work on it, and I never did. But he, he had open heart surgery. And then in 2017, he had his second open heart surgery at two and a half. And we're in this room like the size of a telephone booth for 12 hours with a phone on the wall and a TV. We didn't even watch the TV. We're just like, you know, sitting there. We're high tension, you know, waiting for that phone call that our son made it through the surgery. And so we go upstairs and we're just trying to alleviate his pain. We're trying to get him to sit still. How do you convince a two and a half year old? Hey, your ribs are just broke open. You have to lay completely still for, you know, the whole time that you're here because it's just going to make the pain worse. And they come walking in with like a Hot Wheels toy or a, a coloring book or oh. this $3 comic book. And they're just like, oh, and they sit there and they read it. They're happy. They forget they're in pain. I give my wife and I a chance to sit back and be there for each other and, you know, really comfort each other. And so um, it's one of those things where I was like, this is awesome. You know, I wish I could find a charity to help out and give back to this. So fast forward 2018. Uh, I run into John and Mary. They're selling online. They do the CB4K thing. And what CB4K is, is they send coloring books, comic books, Pez dispensers, pop figurines, uh, oh. stuffed animals to hospitals and cancer centers nationwide. Uh, these hospitals hand this stuff out to sick and critically ill kids, some kids that may not ever get to go home again. Mm. And I was like, this is what I've been looking for. And so I started giving every week. I got to know Mark. Mark knew who I was. I met Mark at C2E2 in 2019, told him, mm -hmm. hey, I appreciate everything you do. Uh, he got to meet Roderick. I'm like, hey, you know, I witnessed this stuff firsthand. You have no idea what this, how much this stuff actually helps the kids. So, uh, you know, I, I met him. And so last year I ran my first campaign for Xenonanite Titan and it failed. Well, something that I had on there is I had Stuff Wilson draw a shirt that said, I'm a Titan for CB4K.org. It had me as Xenonanite Titan reading uh, a comic to my son after an open heart surgery with his sister at the end of the bed with a get well born. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, my thing was officially the money was going to CB4K. Unofficially, per Kickstarter, it was going towards the project. Because, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you know how Kickstarter is. And so it failed. Uh, Mark gets on the internet. He had been reaching out for several months trying to find somebody to do t shirts. First post on the screen, Zen and Anti Titan t shirt for CB4K. And he's like, I love it. So he tells his daughter, hey, message Russell, uh, tell him I, uh, to call me, please. So I was like, oh, no, I'm in trouble. I didn't ask permission to do this. I'm like, so I, I call him and uh, Mark's like, hey, Russ, what's going on? I'm like, hi, how are you? And he's like, dude, I love what you did with the T-shirt. Uh, I've been trying to reach out and get people to do T-shirts. How would you like to be the official T-shirt supplier for CB4K.org? And I'm like, let's do it. So uh, I officially became a member of CB4K in March of this year. I officially launched the CB4K stuff on my web store in, uh, I think it was April. I, I posted the first three shirts, and then I've added shirts as we went. Uh, Rodney Fike did a piece for me with uh, Buddy and Dude from Pitter Patter reading comics to a kid in a hospital bed. We've also added the Iron Man, which I've called it the Mark CB4K instead of like, you know, the Mark 4 because Mark runs CB4K. And it's CB4K. So it's kind of like an Iron Man. So Disney, ha ha, you yeah. can't get me because it's Mark and, and CB4K. So I see that's how you, the t -shirt... I, I, see, I see what you did there. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so uh, that became a thing. I became the sure. official t-shirt supplier. And then right. uh, Mark's like, hey, you know, you have such a good following. How would you like to auction off stuff on behalf of CB4K? Mm -hmm. And I said, absolutely, let's do this. So uh, a few months ago, I started the page Russ Explode Studios charity auctions for CB4K.org, and I have over 40 items on there that you can purchase, you can you can bid on, and all money goes to CB4K. We had one month where we uh, we blew it out of the park. We raised two thousand dollars, which blew my mind. It's twenty five dollars average to ship a box. So for two thousand dollars, imagine all the boxes that were able to be shipped to the hospitals nationwide. And now's a bad time. You got all these kids, you know, that are going through chemo. They're doing it alone because with COVID, they can't have visitors because they're uh, immunocompromised. Yeah. Well, they're immunocompromised. I mean, even oh, like the, the, uh, the common cold could kill them because mm. their immune system is completely shut down. So now you got right. this super bug out there. You got the flu. You got RSV is all going on right now. 
they can't have visitors. So imagine your seven-year-old kid going through chemo by themselves, something that adults can't even tolerate going through. That's mm -hmm. a horrible, horrible thing. And so CB4K alleviates that. These kids get these stuffed animals they can hug at night and they can cry into. They get these comic books that they can escape into another world. They have, and so I wholeheartedly believe in this this charity a thousand percent. And it's my way to give back tenfold for what my son has benefited from. Hmm. There you go. There you go. Man, my goodness gracious. Thank you so much for sharing with us. That's great stuff. Wish you the best with that moving forward. And all all the one all the people who need donations, all that stuff, cb4k.org. Uh, definitely check it out. Definitely check it out. It is a Please do. great and wonderful cause. So many things out there. It's a crazy mix of world we're living in right now. So if we can give these kids a smile or a comic book, a stuffed animal, or another ver another nerdy item to lift their spirits, it would be excellent, Smithers. See, I know I'm sounding like an evil dude right now, but I'm trying to do good here, Russ. So, you know. It's well, a, and the thing is, it's not just things. that. It, it's, a, it's a pay it forward thing. I mean, imagine really you, imagine, you know, like Roderick benefiting from CB4K. Absolutely. In in 20 years when I'm not around or when Mark's not around or, you know, who's going to carry on the legacy of CB4K.org? These kids who have benefited from this that see how much this could benefit other kids are going to remember this as an adult. They're going to seek out the charity and try to help in any way possible. And it's going to grow and they're going to want to help children. And then their children are really going to help children. So this is like leaving behind a legacy of people who want to support and keep this this charity going strong because uh, that's what it's all about is just keeping it alive and keeping it going mm. rock on man rock on once again we're talking with russell allen of russ explode studios if you have any questions for him let us know in the live chat let us know in the comments make sure you are sharing this video with all 700 of your closest friends they're going to like the way they look after watching our videos i guarantee it so russ we're going to jump into something a little bit different here because the next set of questions that we do have for you are this episode of and i quote and every episode of and i quote is brought to you by pod decks pod decks are unique interview questions as well as episode starting prompts in the palm of your very own hands so whether you're a new podcaster or existing broadcaster looking to grow your audience get more engagement you're going to want to check out poddex.com make sure you use the promo code neuroculture to get 10 percent off your order you're not going to want to miss it trust me on this so Russ, first one up on the, out of the gate here. What was the worst time you ever put your foot in your mouth, and what did you say? Probably every moment of my life. <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay. I'm always putting my foot in my mouth. Like, 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 have you met me? I have no filter. So, like, whatever comes to mind, I say it, like, at, at the perfect time. And I honestly could not tell you a time that was like the worst time I put my foot in my mouth because I I'm one of those people that, you know, I've come to the point that I really don't care what people think about me. Right. And I don't mean that like arrogantly. I'm, I don't mean mm -hmm. like, hey, I'm an ass and I'm just going to you know be mean to people. But I, I I say what's on my mind. I don't sugarcoat stuff because I there's nothing worse than asking somebody, you know, how does this look on me? Or, you know, what do you think about my book? And, you know, people are like, oh, it was good. And, you know half the time most of them haven't read it or stuff you know and i like to be an honest person and be like oh i haven't read your book or hey i liked it this is what i like but this is what i didn't like could you change this a little bit as moving forward you know people ask for constructive criticism and 99 percent of people out there sugarcoat stuff and i'm the one person you can come to and i'll give you an honest answer whether you like it or not so yeah. i'm constantly putting my foot in my mouth because some people take it the wrong way because they don't know me and that's just the way that i am you know i say what's on my mind and my wife's just like you're you know the, if you have a worse quality about you and i'm like it's it's not really my worst quality it's my best quality that i have no filter because people know that when i tell them something it's the honest to god's truth so i i, I can't I can't, I can't think of one off the top of my mind that that could be possibly the worst one oh um, that's no, it's okay. If every moment of your life feels like that, hey, you do you, man. You do you. So how about this one? If you if you could be a personal assistant to anyone, who would it be? Oh man, that's a good question. Hmm. And it could be anyone. Anyone. Any person in the known universe. Man, I would pick Brian Jakes, but you know, he passed away several years ago. Like, I would just love to, I would love to, I would have loved to meet the man. I mm -hmm. really would have, you know, mm -hmm. and just tell him how much his stories changed my life and, mm -hmm. you know, helped give me escape. 
Uh, I would have loved to have been his personal assistant, but like in, in the world we live in now, man, who would it be? I, I don't know. <laughs> I really can't. Man, Ryan we're, uh, there we go. I'd love to be Ryan Reynolds' personal assistant because I oh, love you mean funny. oh, you mean Deadpool? Okay, yeah, Deadpool. I would love to be Ryan Reynolds because he's a he's a funny guy and he's an ass at the same time. So he reminds me of me, you know. And like me and him and I, if we were in a room, like I, I think the world would like self destruct with the Probably. snark and and the just the banter. Like yeah. literally, our world would just implode on itself. Uh, but I would love to do that. I would love to be his personal assistant because it would be so much fun. And that would be the best job in the world. Just be like, yeah. what would you like today, Ryan? And, you know, he would just say something off the wall and I would just fire back and, and that would go on for an hour and we would never get anywhere. Well, I guess, no, yeah, that's that's fair. I guess you and uh, Deadpool are cut from the same cloth. And also right. he has a new film out right now called Red Notice. So there you go. Good good stuff for you, Ryan. Now, how about, it's actually six way pretty good into my next question. And if you have the same answer for this, that's fine. But the question on the table now is which celebrity do you think is a positive role model for kids today? <laughs> Definitely not Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> Definitely not right now. I don't now. know, I don't know if Deadpool is the perfect role model for kids today, but if you had to pick yeah. somebody, who would you pick? Man. Um, yeah. Which celebrity do you think is a positive role model for kids today here in 2021? Which celebrity is a positive role model for kids? There's a lot that aren't. Yeah, that's true. Uh, that's true. So it's hard to pick the positive ones. It is hard to pick the positive ones. I mean, I know my kids like watching the show uh, Blimpy or Blippy. Blippy? I, hmm. I don't know. And and it seems like to be a pretty positive show. I, okay. I kind of look down on it because... You know, I grew up with Mr. Rogers Neighborhood. We mentioned that earlier. That was there my go-to go. show. Mr. Rogers Neighborhood there and Lamb Chop Play Along. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, uh, man, I mean, Daniel Tiger. I mean, Daniel Tiger is continuing the the tradition of, of Mr. Rogers Neighborhood. Right. Both of my kids absolutely love Daniel Tiger. And so whoever it is that's behind that, I would say that, would, that one and Blippi would be my two picks because it's not really a celebrity, but well, it's, uh, it's yeah. living off the legacy of a celebrity that That's I looked fine. up to when I was a kid. No, hey, look, you worked your way around the question, so I respect the heck out of you for that. So how about this one? If you decide to get cremated, where would you want your ashes spread? Just drop me in a volcano and just like let me erupt into the world. Like don't even what? cremate me. <laughs> Okay. Wow. That got pretty dark. Uh, but hey, listen, we uh, we ask the questions and all we do is wait for the answer. So that's fine. There you go. We'll just drop you in a volcano when the end is uh, nigh or the end is here. There you go. Have yeah. a nice one. Yeah. Well, I mean, it'll save, our, it'll save everybody time and money. And, you know, here's the best part. You know, when, when the volcano erupts, I will be part of a new landmark. Uh, and part, you know, people will, will be able to be like, you know, family would be like that landmark right there that uh, was built from that volcano. Your great great grandfather is in there somewhere. He is part of that stone. <laughs> ah. Oh, gee whiz! It's almost like a warped version of taking a journey to the center of the earth, like they did with some That's of those right. volcanoes or other objects. With the two thousand, I believe it was the two thousand eight version with Brendan Fraser, who went away for a while, but now he's back on the map. Way to go, Brendan! Yeah, way so to how go. about the He's always yeah. coming and going. He's always coming and going. Yeah, that's the thing. But I actually did enjoy that film, Journey to the Center of the Earth. I mean, granted, it's a family fun version of the story, but it still works, Yeah, I think. I like the second one, too, and that was Dwayne The Rock Johnson. There you go. How ironic. Just saying. Right, but, any, but anywho, what is one thing, just one thing, you wish you had the money to pay someone to do for you? Like, to be honest, I think this is going to sound super corny. The one thing that I wish that I had somebody, the money to pay somebody to do for me is to fix me so I can continue doing the things that I enjoy doing, promoting other creators, mm. uh, writing stories for people to escape from. Uh, the, these last two years have been really hard on me. Mm. Uh, you know, I disappeared last week for a little while just because things finally got too heavy for me to carry. And uh, I just wish somebody could fix the issues that are wrong with me so I can continue supporting my family and not just supporting my family family, but my creative family and keep 
adding people to it and, and shouting them out to the world. I, you know, cause I want to be here for my gift. You know, I, I'm in lever failure and I've got five blown discs in my back. So mm. things have been really uh, hard for me. And if somebody, I could pay somebody the money to take that away right now, that's what I would do. Mm. Right. And so Roderick didn't have to have open heart surgeries anymore. That would be my other pick. Oh. Oh, well, there you go. There you go. I, I, th I think, I think myself and maybe you, the viewer watching at home to a certain degree, we can under, we can understand that even though the viewer or maybe myself have never been in those type of shoes before. We wish you as well as your family. Well, stay strong because we believe in you, man. We believe in you and the rest of your family. You can do it. So see, there you go. There's my little, there's my little soapbox right there. It's right next to my desk over here on the side of the side of the studio. But anywho, I don't want to, I don't want to give you any more peeks behind the curtain. But anyway, we want to take this opportunity to thank Russell Allen from Russ Explode Studios for being our guest this week on And I Quote. And to finish us out on National Novel Writing Month slash National Reading Month. What better way to end it with a very awesome, tacular writer and supporter of all the arts such as you, good sir. So, Russ, where can the good people of the interwebs find you online and everything that you have coming up? All right, folks. So you can find me, Russell Allen, at Russ Explode Studios Books with Heart on Facebook. I have an awesome podcast series where I bring on creators from all walks of life, whether it be a life coach, an author, a writer, a comic book writer, a comic book artist, a pinup artist, whatever walk of life. If you want to come on and talk about your inspirations, why you do what you do, and how you went around the path like me and ended up back on where you always wanted to be when you were a kid, then hit me up there. You can message me directly. You can add me as a friend say, hey, I want to be on your show. You can also find me at Russ Explode Studios on YouTube, on Twitch. You can find me at Russ Explode, Instagram at Russ Explode, TikTok at Russ Explode, Twitter at Russ Explode. Just Google Russ Explode and you'll find me all across the interwebs because that is me. Now, you can also check find me at www.zenonanitetan.com. If you can't figure out how to spell that, that's okay. You can go to Rust Explode Studios Books with Heart, where you can find that link at the top of the page, where you can find my first book, Zeno Nanite Titan, The Fall Before the Rise. This is the first book in a three-part trilogy. Part two should be releasing the beginning of the next year on Kickstarter, and we're going to get that bad boy funded and out into the world, as well as the t-shirts for CB4K.org. We have by several artists. We have uh, Wendy Steen Shaner and April Grady Reyna, as well as Rodney Fike. These three artists donated their time and their work to do a piece of art for me for the t-shirt. So please check them out. Check out their wares as well because they are awesome people who donate their time for CB4K. Not only for the t-shirts, but for stuff to auction off. So I thank them very much. And you can also uh, find uh, Stuff Pool Circle of Destruction on Kickstarter right now. So with everything going on with me, I know that it's only a matter of time before I can't do my job anymore. So I thought, hey, let's take something fun that I started last year, Stuff Pool. Uh, we figured out how to draw Stuff Pool uh, by uh, being on Stuff Wilson's You Can Draw on Thursday nights. And instead of drawing Deadpool, I drew Stuff Pool. I changed it, uh, the body up a bit, and I started adding creators and big jokes. Why did I do that? Well, it was a bad time for everyone. Everyone was having a hard time. And I thought, what better way to do my own little crappy art with witty humor and post it up for everybody to enjoy. Well, it exploded. People loved it. When Stuff Pool didn't show up, people were asking, where's the Stuff Pool drawing this week? Uh, we're missing it. And so it gave me something to do to break up the darkness and the monotony of writing and all the stuff that was going on. So this year, I joked around about doing a card game. Everybody loved the idea and said, hey, you should really do this. I made it bigger and better. There's 40, 40, that's right, I said 40 plus creators, IPs, uh, artists, podcasters that are included in this card game. They all each have a card. At the bottom of that card, you will find a link to where you can buy their work, watch their shows, and whatnot. And so this project is bigger than just me on doing something fun. You guys are going to be playing a card game with your friends, showing off all these great creators, where you can find these great creators. And you're going to help bring new uh, consumers to their product, to their shows, to actually see their art so this is awesome this is another way for me to give back to the community and it's another way for me to be creative and hopefully have an income on the side because next year i will be launching the book two at the beginning of the year and an expansion pack for the card game at the end of the year and that's gonna be my plan moving forward 
So if you guys want to do a show, please hit me up at Russ Explode Studios Books with Heart. And uh, please check out the website, check out the Kickstarter, and don't forget to go join Russ Explode Studios Charity Auctions for CB4K, which you'll find by looking up Russ Explode Studios. And uh, please check out that stuff. All money raised on the auctions and from the t-shirts, 100% of it goes to CB4K, and 100% of that goes towards the kids. They keep nothing. We keep nothing. So please, please, please check it out. Well, it is the holiday season. Tis better to give than receive. And if you look up the word support or supporter in the dictionary, I think there's a picture of Russell Allen next to it. So just saying. But all the links to where you can find that are in the description of this video, as well as all the links to our previous episodes for where you can support those content creators are located in the description of those respective videos. My name is Ryan of Neuroculture. You can follow us on all forms of social media simply at It's Neuroculture. New videos are being posted on our YouTube channel each and every week. Episodes of And I Quote are on Saturdays at noon Eastern. You're not going to want to miss it. And also, Monday night, November 22nd, there is a film that turns a very healthy and young, 25 years old, and we are going to have a live watch-along anniversary celebration of Star Trek First Contact. That's right, starring Patrick Stewart. You make it so. Oh, my gosh, I'm going to have to watch that. That is one of my favorite Star Trek movies. Giddy up, man. Pick up your copy. Uh, stream it on a streaming service. Make sure you have your copy queued up because we're going to kick things off at 8 p.m. Eastern time on Monday night, November the 22nd. I will be your host alongside Star Trek superfan Ray Tessie is going to be joining us. You're not going to want to miss that. So the links are up on our Facebook page, on our YouTube channel to, you know, bookmark it, get ready, set your phasers for action and adventure because resistance is futile. It's futile. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So, in the <laughs> but in the meantime, uh, like I said, support any creators of all shapes and sizes. And to you, the viewer out there, stay healthy, stay strong, stay safe. Also, check out our friends over at HWWS Web TV. Great gamut of shows led by a wonderful group of people. You're not going to want to miss that. But life is better when reading. And most importantly, live long and prosper. Take care. I'm GW Pomager. I'm Dina Marie. I'm Sage Ia. Hey, I'm Thomas Carter Rochester. Hey, I'm David Thompson. Hi, I'm Kevin. And I'm Mia. Hi, I'm Mark. Hey there, this is Dave Adams. Hi, I'm Rosemary Rose. Jerome Connor here. Hey guys, it's Josh Bauer. It's Willow Schuyler. I'm Cosplay Michael. Hey, I'm Bob. It's your boy Country. Hey, I'm Ryan Permison. And I'd like to ask you guys, please subscribe. Please subscribe. Please subscribe. Please subscribe. Please subscribe. Please subscribe. Please, please, please subscribe. 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 Please subscribe to HWWS Web TV. Great bunch of people. And don't forget to smash the bell. Ring that bell. Smash that bell. Hit that bell. Hit the bell to be notified. Hit the bell to get notified of new shows and videos. You're going to want to do that, so do that soon. So we can cross that 20,000 mark. And get us to 100,000 subscribers. To a million and 10 million and 100 million. On HWWS. Web TV. You really like it. I guarantee it. Thank you.